Thank you for the nice introduction. So today I'm indeed going to talk about Brachyspider hyodysenteriae and swine dysentery in Belgian pigs. First, a little introduction. It's, um, we've seen some increase in the number of uh, admittances to uh, the Belgian centers over the last years. And the problem is there's quite a lot of economic losses worldwide because of this bacterium. And the problem is a lot of multi-resistance has already occurred over the years. Another problem is we have a lot of host potential for this one, like rodents or a big problem for this bacterium. Another issue, if we talk about sequencing, is it's a spirogete bacterium and it has a very peculiar genome. It has only 27% GC content and it requires anaerobic growth, which takes about 3 to 10 days to grow properly. Now, first line treatment, antibiotics pleuromethylins and macrolids and lincosamates. So if we go further, what were we doing? We actually want to identify multi-resistance markers within the genomes, because this will actually speed up our identification of these multi-resistance strains. How have we done that? We have a quite nice collection of 90 strains collected over a time range of uh, two years. They represent the Belgian field and really the, the entire country. We did some uh, phenotyping on them, agar dilution, we used the minion sequencer, and we did a custom um, bonito training to get actually high, accurate, and complete genomes. And then there was some downstream analysis. So a little point here, I've presented this already over the last two years. We used the same approach for uh, another peculiar bacterium, Mycoplasma bovis which is also very difficult to sequence. And if we use current models and um, with Guppy or Bonito, we actually get genomes that get a Q score, consensus Q score of about 36, which I don't like because if I want to look at point mutations, this is not sufficient for me. So by training a custom trained Bonito model, we actually get to a Q51 score, which is sufficient to actually identify uh, point mutations within the 3 million base pair genome. So, what did we get? We got various sequence types in the country. Two new sequence types were also identified. If you look at the tree, we also get actually a nice clustering across the country, and we also got some untypable strains in there. Now, the most interesting is the phenotypes that we get. You see, at the upper part, we get very light colors, which is not resistant. At the bottom, we get actually all the different colors, which indicates that we get multi-resistant strains over there. So, if we look at the other results, we compare the phenotypes with the genotypes, we actually see the different clinical breakpoints, cutoffs, and epidemiological cutoffs. If we put this on the top, we have the different phenotypes, and in the middle, you get one of the known genes, it's the TVA gene, which confers pleuromethylene resistance in this bacterium. We see that there's a quite nice uh, representation of this gene that can give us information on if we have a bacterium that is actually resistant or not for both of these antibiotics. If we go further, we can also look at the tetracyclines, where we also see that there's a very nice correlation. So if we get a peak in our phenotype, we can also see that there's a coincidence of the different uh, point mutations within the 16S ribosomal RNA gene. So this is actually another marker that we can use for this. Additionally, we possibly found two new mediators in there. They might be evolutionary, which we still have to identify and uh, analyze further, but they are in quite close proximity uh, within the tetracycline binding region. So, in conclusion, we identified multiple sequence types in Belgium that have been circulating since and also before 2018. Multi-antibiotic resistance, which is really worrying because there's no other treatment possibilities at the moment for these bacteria. And also, this might help actually in putting these cutoffs on a different level. It might actually help in putting a different MIG value or the minimal inhibitory concentration of the antibiotic testing in the future. Now, future perspectives. At Pathosense, we have a diagnostics platform which includes all-in-one diagnostics, where we have viral bacterial um, identification, and we want to include this information in our test in the future. We also want to do some genome-wide association studies, also check or RNA or just methylations in general, and transcriptomics, because antibiotic resistance is very complex, and to end up 
If you want to see more, want to know more, just follow us on the social media. Thank you. I'm open for any question now.